All right, so that's enough of me spieling. Let's kick it over to our interview with Ty Richardson, host of The Morning Rush on ESPN Arkansas Radio. All right, well, hey, we're pleased to be joined by Ty Richardson, proud Arkansas alum, and you know him as the host of The Morning Rush from 6 to 9 a.m. Monday through Friday on ESPN Arkansas Radio, and he's the host of the outstanding Trusting the Process pod. I was just on it myself. So I appreciate Ty for having me on the show, but you got to give him a follow at Ty Sports Radio on the Twitter machine. Ty, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. Mike, I was telling you before we popped on, I had a lot of fun kind of exploring your life. We went in depth for a little over an hour, and there were things I learned about you that I had no clue about. It's a lot of fun, and uh, yeah, man, I'm any, anytime you ask, I'm always willing to come on that SEC podcast. Really excited to talk all things Arkansas. Yeah, hey, nice, great plug right there. So don't forget to check out the uh, Trusting the Process pod. I was just on it. They have even better, way better guests than me, like Josh Pate was just on it. That was a terrific episode. So got to go and check out Ty's work there. But, uh, hey, man, I can't, I got you on here for a reason. Wanted to talk some Arkansas football. And I'll just start with this one, man, and you can go wherever you want with it. But can you recall a time Arkansas – in general, the fan base more more or less, because I know you speak to these people on a daily basis. Can you remember a time they've been this fired up about a coach and just the direction of their football program under Sam Pittman? You have to go back to the Bobby Petrino era. I think Brett Bielema was close coming off the Texas Bowl win, coming off the Liberty Bowl win in 2015. But I, I think this surpasses that, because not only are you seen winning on the field, Mike, you're seeing winning off the field. And I know that you monitor a lot of different transfer portal stuff, recruiting rankings. Arkansas right now in the class of 2023 has a top five class. In the transfer portal rankings, they're in the top six for 2022. So a lot of things are going right off the field. And I don't know, when you look back at Beal and his tenure, kind of the latter part, and then Petrino's tenure, you didn't see that you didn't see that same trajectory moving upwards recruiting wise I think that you're seeing it with Sam Pittman and his staff Mm -hmm. now what are your thoughts on Sam Pittman in this uh you know there's reports out there I believe the the deal that he is trying to get with his super agent Jimmy Sexton now seven years 50 million something like that what what's your thoughts on that because I'm you know I'm not sitting here saying he's not worth every dollar you could throw at him because I think he's been outstanding I've made the the argument that if you go back from the day Sam Pittman was hired to now, I think you can make the case he's been the best coach in the country. So, again, I'm not saying don't pay the man, but I just find it interesting that, you know, he he's come here and he said it's not about the money and, you know, he's made it be known he doesn't want to coach anywhere else and now we're turning around and uh, – you know, he's wanting this mega mega contract, and that's kind of the reason why he's there because he didn't want that to start out. So, I don't know, I, I'm kind of all over the place with this question, but what are your thoughts on Sam Pittman and his contract uh, request there? I think it's an interesting conundrum, right, because he's already been very vocal, and I, I take him at his word that he wants to retire an Arkansas Razorback. He just renovated – he either renovated or bought a new lake house in Lake Hamilton – and actually not too far from where my buddy lives. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to go back this summer, and we might do somewhat of a drive-by. But, Ooh. Mike, you and I – yeah, <laughs> not that not that type of drive-by, but you're, sorry, a, 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 a boat-by or whatever, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but what, what I think needs to be mentioned here is what he said when asked about this is the reason he went the Sexton route is because Sexton has connections not just to head coaches but assistant coaches all over the place. And – at Arkansas, any time that you can add something to your repertoire, I think you do it. And he's not necessarily liked. I know he's he is in Memphis now, but any time you hear the name Jimmy Sexton, the connotation is typically not positive. Mm-hmm. It's negative. And then what my co-host Tommy referred to it as is Jimmy Sexton basically came to the negotiating table with a shotgun and a contract and said, Hunter, you need to sign this or, or else. And I think, Hunter, we haven't heard this officially there hasn't been really anything since the last couple of weeks on this, but I would expect he's not going to wind up getting seven million exact. I think it's going to be in the range of six something, maybe some fatter incentives. 
Mike, when you think Arkansas, you don't think a consistent 10 win program. And I, I wish that wasn't the case, but Florida and Billy Napier getting over seven, Oklahoma paying Brent Venables over seven. The Gators fans and the Oklahoma fans expect to win 10 games every single year and compete for national championships. Arkansas is more in that eight or nine win category, win the SEC West once every four years. You do that, you're going to stay a long while like Houston Nutt as long as you don't get on the back of a motorcycle with a blonde that works at the University of Arkansas. So I get it, man. He just brought Arkansas out of the ashes, out of the grave. And it's not like he was getting any sleep during this time. And he's earned respect from this entire state. But then at the same time, do you also couple with that, well, now should we expect 10 wins, Sam? we got to remember, Mike, this is now the third straight year they have the toughest schedule in all of college football. And this one this year, open up with Cincinnati. You take on Spencer Rattler in South Carolina, which looked like a decent game, except now the fact Shane Beamer's got that thing cooking. He brought in Rattler. Then you take on Missouri State and Bobby Vitrino, fourth game A&M, fifth game Alabama. You've got to go to BYU. You've got to play Hugh Freeze and Liberty. I mean, this thing is just brutal. So I get his his rationale. I'm, I'm speaking to Sexton's trying to get this contract done. But at the same time, I, I think it's more in the sixth range where you're going to wind, wind up seeing Pittman being paid by Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Now, here's a hot topic uh, that – when players leaving and, and going to the transfer portal or maybe you lose a loser recruiting battle, you hear it. I'm not trying to call out Arkansas fans because it's basically anybody, but I have heard a lot of it in the last week or so. NIL, it's hurting the Razorbacks. What's your opinion on that? Because uh, we know that uh, you know Arkansas has set up a whole NIL division, and the, the way I view it, I mean, I've seen quite a few of their guys get deals and. And maybe that was just something people were complaining at the moment because guys were, were leaving the program. And since Arkansas has landed some big transfers too. So what's your overall read on how NIL is working for Arkansas? And you can rope basketball into this as well because I know the Razorback fans, they love them some basketball too. Mike, I think Flagship was the first NIL institution at any SEC school. And Flagship is the University of Arkansas's kind of NIL division. Um all, Terry Prentice has done a good job heading that up. He's been in constant communication with us and other people. I think he does a fantastic job. I want to say the number that Hunter Yurchek put out is over a million, and that's across the board with all athletes. Now, when you hear the likes of Quinn Ewers getting the money he's doing, Bryce Young getting the money he's getting, you're wondering, hmm, how can Arkansas compete with that? And I don't think NIL was ever meant to be a recruiting tool like Texas A&M just used in the past recruiting cycle, and that's why – there are people out there that think changes need to be had. But for Arkansas, I mean, we just read off the recruiting statistics. It doesn't seem to be hurting you. You just brought in Landon Jackson, four-star out of LSU. Jaden Hazelwood, former five-star, former number one wide receiver out of Georgia, was at Oklahoma. And then you've added some really good pieces in high school, not just in the 2022, but now 2023 recruiting class. Arkansas continues to move forward in recruiting. And money's a big deal. Don't get me wrong. These, I think a lot of these student-athletes are going to want to be compensated, especially if they're winning and especially if they're good. But relationships are a big deal. I always get asked, Mike, and you probably do as well, hey, Mike, when are you going to go national? Hey, Ty, when are you going to Bristol? Number one, they wouldn't have me. they probably have you. They wouldn't have me. But I have such a great relationship with my coworkers here. I love my job. And maybe there's more money out there. Maybe there's more pub. But relationships are a big deal to me, and they're a big deal to a lot of young men going through this process as well as their families. So you can't overlook the number one aspect of what Sam Pittman is to the University of Arkansas, and that's relationship-driven. As long as he is the head coach, as long as he doesn't uh, hit the back of Theo's like an old coach might have used to do, and I've just heard that once or twice, then I think Arkansas is going to be solid on the recruiting trail. Never top five in in the country but i mean top 30 top 25 top 20 that's what we've seen the last three classes man if this guy gets a top 10 they're gonna want a statue of him built next to frank broyles next year now what's your thoughts on you know we're basically living in a free agency time i mean arkansas and lsu switching defensive backs joe fouché greg brooks of course to lsu dwight mclaughlin to arkansas and and throw in drew sanders it looks like the razorbacks 
uh, you know, our recruiting uh, former Georgia safety Latravius Brini as well would be a solid pickup to the to the roster. But I don't know. Just what's your overall thoughts on on where we're at here? And do you think Arkansas kind of came out, so to speak, on if you want to call this a trade, which it, it kind of looks like? I we had that actually topic this week, and that's a great question, Mike. With Boucher and Brooks going to LSU, you bring in Jackson, you bring in McLaughlin. What I said is you lose two starters. Now, Brooks was starter in and out. Joe was a starter in the Southeastern Conference. But you gain guys that have a higher ceiling, I think, in Jackson and McLaughlin. And I'm not one of those guys that once Brooks and Fouché left, oh, they didn't need him. Oh, they didn't do this. Oh, they didn't. Guys, well, they started in game. So, obviously, Arkansas needed them this past season. But I think also you have to look at the eligibility and how many years with Jackson coming over and McLaughlin coming over mm-hmm. at underclassmen and Fouché only having one more year, I think Brooks has two. That also has to be valued when factoring in the equation. If you want to say it's an even trade, I'm okay with that. If you want to say Arkansas won, I'm okay with that. If you want to say LSU won, I'm okay with that too. I don't really have a strong opinion on this until I actually see what takes place these next couple of years with Jackson and McGulther. Now, you know, I think super seniors, that really helped uh, Arkansas last season. Uh, I, I believe they had more seniors than anybody in the conference. And I, I think the next closest was Ole Miss. And, man, they just had their first 10-win season that, that they've ever had in the regular season. Maybe this is a way that, uh, you know, we obviously have the super seniors because of the COVID year. But, you know, I think we may have discovered a way, and I, I don't mean this to be disrespectful to Arkansas or Ole Miss or, or you know, the vast majority of college football, but – I do think there is something to, to look in at Alabama and, and Georgia and Clemson and these teams that just reel in all this elite talent. And now all of a sudden, if we're letting guys have, you know, fifth, six years, that seemed to have closed the gap a little bit, in my opinion. Uh, would you agree with that? And, and would you be in favor of the NCAA letting uh, these schools, you know, have an extra year of eligibility? Because the way I look at it, Players at Alabama and Georgia and maybe Ohio State, you want to throw it in there. You know, those guys are, most of them want to be three into the NFL, whereas I think this could be a way to uh, just kind of close the gap, so to speak. Mike, I had never thought of that idea until you just brought it to the table. I love it. You know why? Because it would help Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Because it was veterans versus talent this year. You had the veterans of Arkansas who played the talent likes of LSU, played the talent likes of Georgia and Alabama. You came out victorious against LSU. You almost beat Alabama. You lost them by seven. And then you you did get clapped by Georgia. I was at that game, but we don't have to go over the (laughs) destruction that took place in Sanford Stadium that day. I think that's a great idea. I'm going to be honest, man. I don't. I'm surprised there isn't more attention paid to it because we keep looking for parity in college football. And I know that Alabama and Georgia met in the national championship, and you say that, but this is the – I hate saying weak because they still beat Georgia and still got to the national championship. This is the most blemished Alabama has looked in quite some time. And you got to go all the way back to 2014 when they lost in the college football playoff. I like – I like that idea. I like it a lot. You tell me where to sign the petition, I'll sign it, Mike. Yeah, because, you you know, some people have suggested, well, we maybe we got to limit how many five stars these schools can recruit. I mean, that's ridiculous. You can't do that. But this is a, a way that I just think is, is even across the board. So, hey, I'm, I'm hoping somebody's listed that uh, has the power to, to get that done. I think it'd be great. But, hey, you, we talked about Kendall Browse to open the show. Thoughts on – the speculation that uh, Miami's after him and, and just how vital do you think it is that Arkansas keeps Kendall Browse given the progress of the offense, uh, the, the big jump that K.J. Jefferson made this season, I, and I would even argue you know, the, the performance of Felipe Franks two seasons ago, I attribute a lot of that to Kendall Browse and his system. Just thoughts on, on how imperative it is for Arkansas to keep their offensive coordinator. I think right before that you and I popped on, Jason Candle at Toledo had signed either a contract extension or decided that he's going to stay up there in Ohio. So Mario Cristobal, I I think, is in a situation where he really wants to find someone. And we've seen Kendall Bryles have success at FAU. We've seen him have somewhat of success at, at Florida State. 
And I know he's got Texas ties, but if I'm Mario Cristobal, I'm coming in after him. Now, vice versa, if you're Sam Pittman and you're Hunter Juracek, you can't let this guy go. The rapport, the chemistry, the combination of him and K.J. Jefferson was deadly the back half of the season. You can't allow – and I, I know you might see – you say, well, we can't pay – you need to pay him because the back end and the success and the progress that we saw at the Arkansas quarterback position, not just under K.J., but Felipe, if you remember, had the highest single-season percentage completion in Razorback history. I think it's a real thing. I think McMurphy's report that he's been offered offer the job is real. Now it's just an Arkansas job. And I know it's easy to spend someone else's money, Mike, but I think the <laughs> Razorback Foundation in Arkansas has to find a way to get it done to retain Kendall Bryles and keep him up in northwest Arkansas. Now, there were clearly so many highlights for the Razorbacks on the football field this season. Is, is there one game, one memory, one story, anything like that that stands out to you, Ty, that you'll look back and, and that'll be the highlight of the season in your mind for uh, the Arkansas Razorbacks? You and I were talking about the Texas game last week, and the game that I attended that was the craziest was that game. But as a guy, Mike, that hates Texas A&M more than any university on the planet, <laughs> when Arkansas finally overcame the Aggies down there in Jerry World, I was actually driving on my way to Kansas City for a Chiefs game that I had been invited to by a listener the next day, which they played the Los Angeles Chargers. Seeing Traylon Burks take that pass from KJ in stride and take it to the house, I almost wrecked us driving off the road. <laughs> it was, and that, that had to be that visual. We're watching. If you ever get it over to Kansas City, there's a place called the Peanut, and we're watching this game in the Peanut. There's Kansas fans and Jay and Kansas State fans all around us. There's one television that me, my buddy Ram, and his cousin had the game on. Mike, they almost tried to change the channel, and there was a Kansas fan that pointed to the waitress and said, ma'am, if you change the channel, that Razorback fan pointing at me is going to kill you because I'm not <laughs> kidding. I was screaming, writhing in pain when KJ went down. Malik did not look like he was the guy to be able to get it done. KJ comes back hampered, injured, and just refuses to lose that ball game. Montero Brown has that incredible interception, and that's where we sit today. All right, last thing for you, Ty. I really appreciate all your time. What's the biggest storyline or maybe question mark you have for this Arkansas team heading into the spring that you would like to see answered, hopefully, uh, by the conclusion of spring practice? Hmm. That's a good question. They So you mentioned adding Drew Sanders. You mentioned adding McLeather. They still need some secondary linebacker pieces and defensive line, particularly in the middle. You lose – Markel Utsi off this team last year, and John Ridgeway, who ended up being a godsend from Illinois State. I think that's the previous college he went to. You've got to add some dudes up the middle. This is a beefy league. We need meat. I'm talking double, triple cheeseburger type of guys, Mike. And Arkansas <laughs> doesn't have a lot of them right now. There's, if, if there's a Terrence Cody, if there's a Jordan Davis lying around, hey, make your way to Fayetteville, Arkansas, because that's going to be – uh, that is not going to be a strength of this defense in, in 2022 unless they start adding some pieces at that position group. Or there's just a guy that emerged that we we didn't see coming whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, I forgot one more thing because I'm, I'm not trying to piss you off or anything, but this is a question I always got to ask Arkansas people. Is Missouri, is that a rivalry, and, and how much do you hate uh, Drinkowitz? <sighs> so – Drink has this thing about irritating opposing fans and fan bases that I kind of admire, but then he gets himself in a hole when he loses the games, right? Like Arkansas fans, were, when he said at SEC Media Days, well, I kind of like that I kind of like that rivalry with Arkansas. We hadn't, we hadn't lost to them. And it's like, all right, well, you got clapped this year in Fayetteville, just destroyed. And I think there's a good chance that they're going to get beat in Columbia this next year based on what Arkansas has coming to the table and they they should have beat them last year if not for defense just refusing to stop Connor Basilak which didn't make any sense because Basilak couldn't do anything against them this year so drink gets on my nerves Missouri as an institution Mike I think we talked about this a little bit there's like the Northwestern guys the Missouri guys and the Syracuse guys 
they're not all of them are bad. Like Bob Holt, if you didn't know this, he is a Missouri alum, mm-hmm. nicest human being on planet Earth. But for every one of Bob Holt, there's four, and I can't name a specific person, there's four ch- chowder heads that you don't like that are too <laughs> cocky and too arrogant. And that school, outside of Shakespeare's Pizza, Mike, there's not a lot of great things <laughs> happening in Columbia, Missouri. I'll tell you right now. Okay, great answer. I appreciate you not holding back. He's Ty Richardson. Give him a follow on Twitter, Ty Sports Radio. And don't forget to check out the morning show, The Morning Rush on ESPN Arkansas, 6 to 9 a.m., Monday to Friday, and Trusting the Process Pod. Ty, I really appreciate you. Mike, it's always good to catch up. I love talking SEC football. we still got 230-some-odd days <laughs> until the first game, but just like you, man, we're going to be uh, covering it every step of the way. All right, so just want to say thanks again to Ty for joining the show. Really appreciate him giving us so much time talking about some Arkansas Razorbacks football, trying to go the extra mile, try to make these podcasts as interesting as I can as long as we got content to talk about. So I hope everyone's appreciating going around the league, trying to get these interviews, trying to work on some others all across the SEC. Fingers crossed we'll have more of these to come. But I want to say thanks again, Ty, for joining the show. Really appreciate it. And who knows, maybe I'll get Cousin Shane back on the line one of these days. He's he's on a little bit of a vacay there. So I do appreciate each and every one of you for hanging out, having to listen to me ramble on here. I know it's rough, but hey, that's going to do it for this episode of the show. And if, as always, if you made it this far, if you wouldn't mind going that extra step, just giving us that five-star written review on the Apple Podcast app or the Spotify app now. If you don't have an Apple product, Spotify, you can give us a five-star there. And, of course, as always, we give you a free beer koozie for each and every one of you that gives us that five-star written review or the five-star review on Spotify. And just send those on over to that SEC podcast at Gmail. Dot com and we'll send you the beer koozie of your choice free of charge. But that's going to do it. Get you on the next one.